<laughs> bring us in, Brandon. Bring us home. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Season 2, Episode 3. Thanks very much for listening. Uh, my name is Brandon Curry. I'm Jeff Collins. I'm Josh Bond. And Trevor Lindy. Who is busy away editing and doing stuff with computers. Um, we have no so idea what That's the only doing. time you hear him today, then that's, that's it. That's he's, it. He's, he's super busy. Because we're now on We'll video. make him ask the first five questions. I'll have video, to come to your so. defense. He's extremely busy with <laughs> tech and video yeah. and hey, audio. Hey, literally and like, twisting you know, things. here, I'll put the camera on me for a second. Like <laughs> editing <laughs> as we record. <laughs> We've got the sound yeah. going on. All the cameras the sound engineers. Switched. Us three guys talking professional insights. Three guys and a sound engineer. Trevor Lindy. <laughs> uh, our uh, guest this again again because he was so good the first time. Yeah, so first we uh, ah. we had a bunch of uh, <laughs> bunch it of more flows. questions. Uh, hello, Dave Nash. How are you, Brandon? Jack Nash. Good to um, see you. Thanks for staying over, and because uh, I know you're a very busy guy, you got a you got a retail store you got to run. Yeah. Um, so we, we just had a bunch of more questions that we wanted to uh, get into. Uh, so the first one, maybe I'm thinking this is going to be the quicker one because okay. I think the the, the next one's a fully loaded one. So the the misconception in the retail industry <clears throat> of sales. Right. So I'll give you the example. You give me a call. This is part of your good service because you email or call, typically call or text me. Right. And you're like, because you know my size, and you're like, hey, Brandon, just an FYI. We were seeing this before. We all get those emails. Um, hey, I'm having out a clearance sale because it's the old uh, season. I'm bringing in spring and summer. And it's... Uh, a de- this specific, the, the brand that I wear is Seven Downey, and uh, they want to um, do, what is it, buy one, get 50% off, buy two, get 60% off, buy three, get 70% off. So I walked in, so kind of bought numbers. three, and uh, I ended up paying for one normally marked up shirt, right, after tax. Uh, or less. Or less. Right. I got three shirts right. after tax for less. Then you tell people about it, and of course, a whole bunch of people come in. So the first comment was from my business partner, he's like, oh, I feel bad when I buy it on sale. I'm like, don't feel bad. That's what Nash wants. He wants people to come in. Right. That's the whole purpose. Right. But two, some cynics who know, a cynic yes. who knows the price of everything and the value of nothing. Right. Will say, well, that just goes to show you the kind of margin they or have. Or really, in- really more to the point, know the price of nothing and the value they maybe know, but they don't really know the because they because the layman assumes that you're you're making money and everything right because we've done that to ourselves in the retail sector yeah. when i say ourselves i don't mean me yeah but clearly Retailers. if you're a clearly if you're a clear thinking individual and you walk into the mall and it's september 8th and all the clothing stores the chains have signs in there, buy one, get one. Seventy uh, percent uh, off. Yeah, they're already on sale. Okay. Yeah, you know that you, it, it's the way retailing is today. That's the way I always think. That's the that's the the lazy way of retailing. You hang a sales sign out, and you hope people come in, and they 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 think they're buying new fall goods at a discounted price. You haven't even started the season. Well. It doesn't take a genius to figure out how am I going to survive if I do that all the time. I mean, if if I just get the goods in and already I'm forty percent off or half price, how how can I make money unless I'm not telling you the truth on what the price is? Right. So, so then, how does a small retailer like yourself, who's been around for seventy three years, right? Obviously, you've got more, you've got a ton of experience, a lot more experience um, than a lot. But how do you do that? What's the methodology? Do you do bank in? Do you go see your bean counter? And sit there and go, well, this inventory that's been sitting here for eight months, six months, it's already cost me X mm-hmm. sitting on the shelf and taking right. up space. Right. Therefore, I factor that in. What do you do? Okay, so I mean, in my case, and it's funny you ask this because yesterday I had this conversation with a supplier and my father. The three of us were talking. And he made the comment that when he goes around to stores, and he was showing me new fall product for next year. Mm-hmm. Okay. You're already buying for fall, done. and we're recording now March 2019. Yeah, no, so fall's done. But you've he, already purchased for fall right. 2019. Correct. Right. Okay. So he made the comment, "Oh, you're nice and clean." So that comment means your inventory, your store looks good. You have a little bit of fall stuff left, but your your store is mostly spring goods. I said, "Well, you know how hard I work at making it like that, 
because in the old days, in my father's early era, whatever was left in fall went downstairs and whatever was left from last spring you brought back up and then you continued to buy and that's what you sold. Mm -hmm. I quickly understood that, that you can't afford to do that because first of all, the public spoke clearly. Um, if they didn't buy it last fall, they didn't like it. What would make you think it got any better looking in six months or eight months? Just the price would make it better looking. Well, I mean, but if you just think you're going to put it away and put it back out, sure, people aren't stupid. Discount it at the time. Take the discount when you have some traffic. Yeah. In other words, fall merchandise tough to sell in July. Yep. Sure. Okay. So what do I got to wait till July for to put those extra shirts I have laying around on sale? Why not do it now? Guy might be interested in buying it now. Mm-hmm. Whose sales going off? Oh, that's, that's our guest, so we can't say anything. <laughs> that's Sorry. So funny. No, we don't care. That's great. That's so hilarious. Hilarious. To me, I, I thought th- I turned it off. I yeah. think of Lowe's, for example. Like I go there a lot when I'm buying product for for building, and all the outdoor furniture from last year is now back out what they didn't sell at right. the end of last season, and they got a so, introductory discount to kind of move it out a little so bit. So more to Brandon's point. So the idea for me is, I had my chance. I sold what I could sell time to now give customers a deal and there's no secret at at the example you just said at 50 60 and 70 there is no money being made there's money being lost but I hope when I make my guesses on inventory and and choices that I make more good guesses than bad guesses because you know it's a crapshoot I'm doing it I'm doing it eight nine months ahead of time mm-hmm. so if I had 500 shirts sitting there on that selection you could Safe to say, it's like, ooh, Dave's uh, yeah, not, not. It's hitting, hitting the well, pocketbook. Well, and, and, and is the theory, and maybe because I'm not in retail, but is the theory, hey, you know what? Give people that buy with you throughout the year a, a sale every now and Listen, then. Listen, ha- the reason you get a call from me right? and we spread it around to the group is that if anyone's going to buy them, listen, I want to sell them. Yeah, you don't I want to sell them. But I'd love the guys who support me to get a crack at that first. Yeah. Because you got you are the guys who support me. I want you to get the deal. I want you to go, oh, you know what? I don't mind paying regular price for some stuff because I know there's always going to be some gems in here for me. And that's and it helps me clean it up quick. And I move on. Move on to the next season. Because this this uh, supplier told me clarity he goes, Dave, you wouldn't believe the amount of retailers that have inventory that's 10 12 years old what really eh? now in my store you you could never find anything because i i don't let it be around i'm i mean if i have to take 75 off of it to get rid of it i'm moving it because i want to stay as fresh as i can you know i can't sell to the walls Mm -hmm. there's never going to be a a time you come in and go it's why he's got no inventory (laughs) (laughs) because i have to keep it full right but i mean you got to keep you got to keep moving. You got to keep current. So the, uh, I guess it, in general, maybe don't talk specifically about your store, but right. I, I know when we talk about restaurants, would you leave the bloody, you keep playing with the camera? It's because my phone comes in. Okay. Yeah. So if a phone call comes Sorry, in, guys, we're it takes out the picture. Oh, okay. All right, fine. It does. Old married yes. couple so over there. I'm, I'm trying YouTube. to stop. YouTube. Stop, stop it. Well. Well. Oh, now you're making it worse. Yeah. So anyway. Drawing attention to it. Yeah. So That's anyway, okay. uh, we, um, we know that the average restaurateur, uh, if you're making eight points, right, you're doing well. Right, you're doing well. So um, not so much the big boxes, but a store like yourself. And, and when you, I'm sure you're part of associations and stuff like that. What are those stats? What the markup needs to be? No, just the at, at the end of the day, if you're all going in, if if I'm if I'm you know coming out of college or if I'm a late 20, 30 year old, now I'm thinking retail clothing retails where I want to be what what is what can I if I'm doing to get into it yeah like what's the what's my take home at the end of the day with all the so first of all you don't want you don't want to do it yeah right you don't want to do it (laughs) so listen I mean it's what it's why I'm going to be the end of the road for for a three generation business because my kids are going to do are doing some other things because they understand they see and it's it's not a bad thing. It's just it, it's not the it's not the business model today. It's not the business model. It's long hours. It's it's 
listen, I mean, it, 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 I'm not saying you can't have a living. I, of course, I've had a living doing it, but it's, it's a tougher living retail because it's inventory. It's a grind, mm -hmm. right? Okay, it's inventory. Mm -hmm. So it's buying ahead of time, paying for it way before you sell it, and then hoping you sell it. I mean, that's simplified as simple as I can make it, right? Right. So the, the business model of a restaurant isn't load up my freezers with food and hope I get customers. Right. The model, and I don't know the restaurant business, but the restaurant business would be we order food regularly, and if we're selling more steak than we are chicken. Smart restaurant tours do with us, yes. We don't have a lot of chicken sitting in the freezer. We have more steak in the freezer. You understand yeah, yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah, getting yeah, at. Sure. So you're not hung with stuff, except I don't know that. So I'm buying, thinking. You're close speculating. <laughs> basically. Yeah. Basically. Now, it's changed a bit because a lot of my suppliers, like Seven Downey, have stock on hand all the time. So it takes a little. So I give them upfront orders, but then I buy way less than my needs are going to be projected so I can go back into the market and keep buying mm -hmm. or not buy. Meaning things are slow and I don't need to buy anymore. I, yeah. I'm good. Yeah. Less risk. Less risk. So, I mean, it, it isn't the best model. That's why there isn't. Listen, St. Catharines only has a few menswear stores. Yep. It's not a secret. Why? Because who wants to do it? Right. You need a lot of money up front. I mean, I walked into a business that was existing. Sure. Okay. You got to walk in cold. Now you got to get credit from everyone. Why are they going to give you credit? You have no record. You have no track record in our business. I mean, my business is fraught with the Midnight Dash guys. Oh, God, yeah. Terrible. Yeah. You know, they come in, they got all the big plans and fix up a fancy store, and all of a sudden one day they're gone, right? Mm -hmm. And then they stick everyone in the industry. So, I mean, it, hmm. it isn't the best model for today. And then I guess that leads us to the next one, which is a bit more fully loaded, is that, because uh, I, know, I know both your sons, okay. right? We, we yeah. do, right. Uh, succession. Like, are you, are they truly not going to... Uh, you know, maybe take a millennial view on your model and maybe mo millennial it up or, uh, you know, well, I would go say, to the online? I would say, as I sit today, one, definitely not, because he's a tradesman, and I'm proud of him, and he's doing great. Oh, it's a great job. And, he, and he, huh. he, he'll, be, he'll be great for the rest of his career. The other one, my younger son, who's in sales right now, probably has the... Um, probably could do it. Um, I'm of the belief that if he was going to do it, he probably would have been with me by now because he's in his mid-20s. So he'd probably be like I did, got groomed a little bit. So I don't want to say no that he wouldn't, but it doesn't look like, I think he's got bigger aspirations. And quite frankly, and it's nothing against my kids because I know they both work very hard, but they see the hours that th that retail is. It's, it's not the best hours. It's every day. It's every weekend. It's it's just what it is. And I don't feel badly about it. I chose to do it, and I enjoy it. But I think millennials today, they want a holiday. They want they want what they want. They want instant gratification. They it's it's you know they want all the money with none of the work. And I'm not saying they don't want to work. They do work hard. Yeah. No, but, not, your, not your sons in particular, yeah. but a lot of people get But in generally speaking. Like not I to the same extent, right? Yeah, I understood going in what it was going to be. My dad told me when I was young, you'll have, a, you'll have a good solid business if you stay on it. You'll make a good living. You'll never be a rich man. And you're going to work like a dog. <laughs> he was pretty bang on. Yeah. <laughs> he was pretty bang on. So, I mean, it, I just don't think it's, it's not in the cards right now, but who, you never know. You never yeah. know. Never know. Well, it would you, be nice, sentimentally. It would be nice for generations, but we'll see. And w when we talk about styles, have you seen a lot of styles get recycled now? Like oh, yeah. that you've bell bottoms coming back? Yeah, bell bottoms. We well, do bell bottoms. I, I hope not. I don't want bell no, bottoms. No, but I did see a pants <laughs> so? supplier yesterday with. He showed me three or four pleated styles. Oh really? yeah, pleated. Wow. So I mean, you guys—I can't get made fun of anymore. I got some. <laughs> Where still I got some. I still got some. Dust so, them off. I mean, you guys Must. are at that age now where you're going to start seeing some stuff that maybe you saw when you were younger. Yeah. And you'll start to see it. I mean, I've I've already lived through a few of them. The mesh I mean, button down. I mean, I've I've seen. You know, I, right now everything's tight and trim and and slim. When I first came into business, stuff was like. It looked like it was all too big for everyone. Right. 
But from a, from a sales point of view, it was excellent because the slim guy put the big thing on because it was fashionable. The big guy put it on because it fit him and he was comfortable. So it, everyone was good. Yeah. Today, the slim guy loves it because it's slim. The big guy struggles mm -hmm. because he can't find anything to fit him. He, or he has more trouble finding stuff to fit him. So, you, so you, don't be a big guy. So you leave a li you leave some people out of it. Who so be cautious, Jeff, when you go in and shop. Yeah, <laughs> who want to be fashionable, right? <laughs> so, but I mean, it's all the belly. I see the, the belly tightening. <laughs> all right. So, um, anything else? I guess uh, you want to give us some insight on. Uh, yeah. The what's store? the new like, styles coming up this year? I want to know what's come. What's coming in here? So your your new styles. Hit. So just for our listeners, because it's podcast, so they can listen whenever, right? right. Uh, typically. You know, we, we, we like them to listen every week kind of thing, but we know everyone's busy. So we're recording this in March of 2019. So by the time this hits, when is this going to hit? I Probably honestly, it, no, no, it'll be April-ish, April? May, something along those lines. So right when sure. we're buying our new spring clothes. Yeah, so when is spring hitting in April or is it already now, there now? Well, I mean, it, the store's probably 80% in for spring. Things look colorful. There's lots of nice short sleeve stuff. There's shorts. There's what's, the, what's the colors this spring? What's the color? Well, there's always a little more daring color happening in, in in men's stuff. But I mean, listen, when it comes to retail, you've still got to be mindful of of your broad base of customer. Mm -hmm. So there's always a customer who wants the newest, the brightest, the hottest, and then there's a base of customer who likes to be fashionable. But you know, I like black. I like white. I like Simple, I don't want too busy, I don't want too colorful. Plays, so, the, plays the neutrals, right? So, I mean, as a retailer, either you're, you're all in on what's hot, and, and but I generally try to keep a little bit of a broad base because I want to sell a broad base of people. I want to just sell one person. Diversify. I think it's whatever looks good okay. with the beards now. <laughs> right? It's all beards. Diversify your portfolio. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming in and My taking pleasure, time out here. We really great. appreciate it. Uh, if you can let us know what your Twitter handle and all that oh, is, sure. we'll make sure that you so tag. Knows. Yeah, I got a mark down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so but, as I know, I'll let you know. Yeah. yeah. And then we'll uh, definitely uh, promote you on the uh, World Wide Web social media. Yeah. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Th that yeah, was awesome. Nice meeting yeah, you. Thank you very much. Help us help you stay informed. Woo. Take care. Out. Bye. Ciao.